Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be very, very interesting following up on the game yesterday, the Glasgow Derby, Celtic and Rangers at Celtic Park. Before we get into the video, I, I promise I'd do it, so I'm going to do it. Shout out to Matt Matthew, who uh, I met down at the CSA yesterday. Gave me some very kind words about the channel, so I appreciated it. And I promise I'd shout out, so why not I'll give you one here. Um, but aye, Celtic at Parkhead yesterday, 1-0 win. Um, or a 1-0 win for the English folk. Um, a fantastic game. A game that, you know, really, to me, has um, showed that not much has changed. As much as Rangers fans may want to disagree. To be honest, it's a game where a lot of fans were going in with a lot of amnos uh, amnosities. Or, um, um, no, I don't fucking know. A lot of, you know, a, a bit of doubt. You know, a lot of Celtic fans did have doubt in the team. And a lot of Rangers fans were very ambitious in their team. Very confident in their team. That this would be the time they finally shut down Celtic. The time that they were going to show us that something new, something's changed. And in my opinion, yesterday, uh, we played a team which is as good as a Mark Warburton on a Pedro Cushing side. That is my honest opinion on yesterday's game. Look, there's no denying that Rangers have got better. They've got, they're a better side, right? Yesterday, their defence was a bit better than what it has been the last few times, but the performance we gave was a performance like we have given every single time we've played them over the last couple of years, bar those stupid draws we got against Graham Mutty. Um, we walked all over them. We dominated the game. Uh, and really, after that first half performance, there was no doubt in my mind that we were going to go into win. And aye, we only won 1 0. If you didn't watch the game, the scoreline might not be as suggestive as um, what I, I, I think that Celtic fans would now take away from the game. You might look at it if you didn't watch the game and go, only 1 0, Rangers must have ran them close. No, we walked all over them once again. We dominated the game. If it wasn't for the crossbar and Alan McGregor pulling off a couple of good saves, I mean, granted, I hate the cunt, right? But uh, he's, a, he's a cracking goalkeeper, there's no denying that, he always has been, he's always been a decent keeper. So if it wasn't for him, wasn't it for the post, the woodwork, you know, we could have easily won 4 5 now once again. It was a performance that merited a 4 or 5 now result, but sadly we just didn't get those goals. Eventually we did break through, we got there in the 60th minute, we got ourselves a goal, a fantastically worked goal, a fantastic team goal. And um, really there was no way back for Rangers after that point, they tried to push towards the end of the game, you've seen them come to life a little bit more. But they set out their team yesterday, Rangers, in a way that suggested that they weren't going for a win. They were hoping to hold off Celtic for as long as possible. I think a draw was what they were actually aiming for. And after all the talk from Rangers fans and all the talk from Stephen Gerrard, you know, they thought, that we thought I thought they were going to come to Celtic Park with some sort of presence, trying to establish something, a form of, you know, we're here, that's us back. But no, they, they laid down, it looked like. And, you know, it was really a dominating performance to the point where... I don't see much change in Rangers. I mean, Rangers fans are going to ultimately disagree. And I know that. I can picture the comments section. Rangers fans are going to go, no, no, we have improved because this, that, and the next thing. Look, we won yesterday. We dominated the game. There's still a long way to go this season. Rangers, aye, they may run us close. But the reality is we're now four points clear, as I said, early days. Um, and after this crisis talk, I mean, surely, the, the, oh, it's got to be dismissed. This hype around Gerrard and Rangers being much better than Selig now. Surely at an end. Right at the end. Uh, a lot of Rangers fans want to pick on the refereeing performance yesterday, talking about the referee, and Stephen Gerrard hitting out with absurd comments on how the referee cost them the game. Look, Willie Collum has never been a great referee. The SFA have not got one great referee to their name. Um, ultimately, the refereeing standards up here are absolutely abysmal, and there's been evident for every single club. Every club has had to deal with poor referee decisions, and it has cost them points, but yesterday, no chance did the referee cost them the game. Alan McGregor should have been sent off. Rangers should have been down to 10 men. Um, what he done to Christopher Isle should have merited a red card, but obviously it was unseen referee now. I've never seen it back to it at the time. Um, so nothing we can do. We have to just move on. Rangers fans, maybe not so much as Gerard's comments, but Gerard's comments really, to me, not making much sense and looking to play the blame game. Um, for ultimately, what was a poor performance from Rangers? And Stephen Gerrard's got to sit down and acknowledge that. You know, they, they weren't great. They didn't do anything. They never... Really, at any point, looked threatening. Morelos had a chance uh, late in the game when Gordon made a good save. They had a chance early on in the game, a shot going over the ball. And really, for for the, the majority of the game, otherwise, that's the only chances I can remember Rangers really having. And then there was us, who smacked the bar about three times, smacked the post a couple of times, and forced McGregor to make a couple of good saves. So, I mean, very, very different performances. I mean, 16 shots, 9 in target. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, that is just... We broke... People saying, you know, oh, the defending's got better. Selic like, can't kind of break them down as easy. They've got 16 shots and 9 on target. You know, that's, that's quite a lot. That is quite a lot of shots. Um, overall, I thought the Celtic team played fantastic. They answered um, a lot of critics. Uh, and even a lot of Celtic fans. And, I, and that's not me targeting self. I'm not going out and saying you should never doubt your team and fuck you for saying you doubt it. You know, everybody has a right to their opinions. And, and after what's been happening with the board and the behind the scenes and, and even performances early in the season, getting knocked to the Champions League, getting beat off hearts, there is reasons for Celtic fans to have doubts. And I don't, I don't blame them because a lot of fans, including my pals, you know, going into the game saying, I don't know about the day. 
and I can understand that, but I think Celtic really stepped up yesterday uh, and really showed us all, you know, we're still the champions of Scotland, we're still going to go in and win the league this year. Uh, and every player on the park, honestly, gave a fantastic shift. There's no many players yesterday I can sit down and say, you know, weren't good enough. They didn't look great. Tom Rodgers was the only player I thought who had a, a, a bit of an iffy game, but ultimately he was one of the main reasons we got our goal, busting through uh, and, and really creating. Uh, as he normally does, a great creator. And he, he helped create our goal. He helped us get that breakthrough and he helped us uh, break the duck. Uh, and we got our goal, which we thoroughly deserved, and Roger was a key part of that. So, I mean, despite him, as I've said, having an iffy performance, which I thought, uh, he did ultimately help us get our goal, so I can't really complain. Um, but every player in the park, Gordon, Lustig, solid game. He was outpaced a couple of times, but Gordon, fantastic. Iron Bayat, as solid as you like. I thought Christopher Iyer was fantastic yesterday, as well as Dedrick Bayat. I think both of them had a fantastic performance at the back. And see, if, if it just comes to every week, if these two players, Bayat and Iyer, can play consistently like that every week, Maybe we don't need to ask all these questions about centre half, but it's just when it comes to Europe, they really get shown off, don't they? They really come at their shell as raw and not as good as what we need. Benkovic still there on the wings. Hopefully he'll come in and have a good game on him. Tierney played fantastic yesterday. Terrific. I, you know, I thought he had the Rangers players in his pockets that he had to deal with. Points of the game, he had two or three players in his fucking pocket. Brown, terrific performance. And Cham, man of the match, fantastic performance. Uh, McGregor, class. Forrest, good enough. Uh, Edward and Griffiths, you know, obviously the striker's job is to score. One thing that always annoyed me about Edward yesterday was if I had kept drifting out to the left. Uh, and obviously we're, we're, we're missing that kind of natural left side player, McGregor, more of a calm Edward, a striker. So maybe it's just kind of natural and a tactic for him to float over to the left-hand side. But ultimately I always feel like he should be in the middle. He should always be there for that option. At the end of the day, he is the striker. But, you know, I never affected too much... Um, we still dominated the game, and Griffiths and Edouard didn't get themselves a goal, but they had their bits. Griffiths uh, having a terrific opportunity with a free kick, good save from Alan McGregor once again. So every player who came on the park yesterday and played, really no issue with, no problems whatsoever. I think it was a solid team performance, and as Celtic fans, we can't complain. We got what we ultimately needed, we got a win, and uh, maybe Rangers fans will be a little less, you know, bullish about um, heading into the next few games uh, against them. But you know what, Ibrox is the next protocol for us playing them, that could be a very different story. We'll see what the build-up is like to then. We don't know what direction Celtic and Rangers are going now, so it's a long time till then. I think we take our minds off it altogether uh, and focus on the games ahead, ultimately. That's what we both need to do, Celtic and Rangers fans, because Rangers fans, I think, we're getting way ahead of ourselves. Celtic fans, you know, we, we know what to expect. We know we should be going on to win the league title this season. It's ultimately um, the goal, and ultimately we're good enough to do so, and there's no team who I think are on Celtic's level. And Rangers, once again, proving yesterday they're not yet in Celtic's level, despite how many fans on any side would say, you know, we're still another level ahead of Rangers. I'm not going out of my way to say Rangers were absolutely shite, the, but honestly, I just don't feel like there was that much of a difference when playing them last season. Obviously, we didn't get five goals or whatever, but we were still the much better team. Ultimately, very happy, and I think that's what we all should be after the performance yesterday. Brendan Rodgers, hopefully here for 10 in a row, and hopefully this adds a kick back to the team. A bit of motivation lightens the mood for what has been slightly dim over the past few weeks for Celtic fans. A lot of people having their complaints, having their opinions, and hopefully this has just brought a real life back to the team, the club, the fans, um, which ultimately is what we want. What we need positivity is always, you know, we're on our way to back you, aren't we? No, I, 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 I just went that a bit too far, but yesterday's performance spelling a lot of positives out, and, um, you know, ultimately... Cannot complain. Who's flushing the fucking toilet? One thing that I think that has to be addressed coming from this game is this whole 800 fan scenario. Look, you know, as, as great as it is having those 58,000 Celtic fans partying, fantastic. Look, it's really too... You can't deny and saying it's better when there's 8,000 of them to rub it into. Isn't there? And um, I think Rangers are really... By bringing this whole 800 ticket scenario and, and, and introducing that into the fixture, it's really taking a wee bit of an edge, a wee bit of the competitive edge away. Uh, it's good having the back and the fourth. Um, I know it wasn't really the same, but it was a great atmosphere anyway. Obviously, 58,000 uh, 58, Celtic fans is unbelievable. You know, that's fantastic. And it's great rubbing it in at the end of the game. But I, I hope moving forward, I hope next season we really get to return to having 8,000 of our fans at Celtic Park and 8,000 their fans at, uh, or 8, their fans at Ibrook, sorry, and 8,000 their fans at Celtic Park. I just, I, I miss that kind of back and forth. Uh, I mean, you couldn't hear the Rangers fans all game, which is obviously fantastic because you don't want to hear them, right? But... The wee back and forth between the sets of fans is always great. And that was missed yesterday, I think, at points. Although the atmosphere was incredible for Celtic fans uh, and really just establishes how great a fixture it actually is. I'm looking forward to playing them again throughout the season because uh, it'll be interesting to see what Gerard will do to try and change it. Because yesterday they just didn't look great. I think we've seen better competition. We walked all over them, lads. I'm, I'm just being honest. And I know a lot of Rangers fans are going to disagree, but we did. We did walk all over them. It was a completely dominating performance. Reminded me of the time we played them at Hamden, actually, and we only got the 1-0 as well. Walked all over that, that day, and it should have been more. 
Um, and it reminded me a lot of that yesterday. So, aye, let me know your opinions to the game. Really, I'm just one happy Celtic fan. Uh, and really, I would come on here and give a deeper analysis and such. But why, why do I need to? Because we know what we've seen. We know what's to be expected. And uh, I think we should all just be really happy. And there's nothing really to criticise or critique us or so. Why not just take it and run, you know? And let's move on to the next game. International break now, sadly. But moving on, just carry through the momentum. Hopefully it carries into Europa League. That's, that's important. Let's get things all positive once again. That's a, that's the main uh, takeaway from that game, I would say. Um, if you have enjoyed, like and subscribe. Let me know your opinions to the game. Let, you know, let me know your opinions to my opinions. Uh, Rangers fans, you know, take... I mean, they've not lasted to this point. It always happens, you know. What happens is um, Rangers fans watch the first 10 seconds of the video. They, they, they pick up on one thing. Don't watch the rest. Leave a comment. And then I address something later on. I say something completely different when it comes to the video. Gerard, I would give you a hat's off, but I don't like you, so no. Uh, see you all later. And uh, make sure you like subscribe. See you next time.